This is Karen Walton, and you're watching the TV Writer Podcast. Hosted by Gray Jones, the TV Writer Podcast is brought to you by Script Magazine and ScriptMag.com, the leading source for script writing information in print and on the web. And by Final Draft Script Writing Software, the entertainment industry standard for script writing worldwide. My name's Gray Jones, and I want to welcome you to the TV Writer Podcast, partner of Script Magazine, episode 12, for Monday, March 7th, 2011. Well, you've heard of March Madness. We've got March Madness of a different kind this month, because we have a cornucopia of Canadian writers that we're talking to through the month of March. Um, as I mentioned last week, we've got so many that we're probably going to even have to double up on some of these weeks. Today, I'm talking to award-winning screen and TV writer, producer, Karen Walton, best known for the cult classic Ginger Snaps, and also currently writing Flashpoint, which you have probably seen on TV at some point. Um, before the interview, I do want to get a couple of things out of the way, and um, one of them is that uh, you've noticed that I usually have on the side here a uh, a book that i'm promoting uh it, with dig and frickland last time uh we had a pretty um heated discussion about uh, about resources and and their their purpose um but i i'm a firm believer that that books uh and other resources can be a great help to our writing um at any stage of our career to get you started to help you through the rewrite process um, learning about networking and giving us tips on the industry. Um, they, they can be invaluable in helping our careers. Well, this particular book is written by Ellen Sandler. It's called The TV Writer's Workbook, A Creative Approach to Television Scripts. And I've been reading it lately, and uh, I just was um, actually rereading it, and, and, uh, and I was reminded how excellent it was, how wonderful these concepts were in, in helping to stimulate the creative process in writing scripts. And so I decided to contact the author. Um, she's an Emmy-nominated author, uh, a writer, rather, of, um, of TV shows. She's written for Coach, Taxi. Uh, you might have heard of Everybody Loves Raymond, um, very popular show. And uh, she's going to be on the TV Writer Podcast in the month of April. And so what I would like to do for the first time is, uh, is actually um, ask you to buy this book. Um, it, it's available through the tvwriterpodcast.com site. If you go to um, the mini store, it's available for about $10, uh, so very inexpensive. And uh, I'd like to give you some homework for you to buy this book and read it before the first week of April and, uh, and send in your questions for Ellen Sandler. Uh, I think it'd be a great opportunity to interact with the author of a great book. And uh, I, I really, really can vouch for this book that it is uh, an excellent resource. And in particular, uh, it's got great ideas for stimulating uh, plot creation. Um, ideas for, say, for instance, uh, one tip that she has is to use the seven deadly sins as um, motivating factors for what might start a story going uh, when a, per a certain person character is wrestling with a certain a very specific thing that they've done wrong um lots more tips like that and i i think it would be great for you to um to follow with me through this book and then to talk to ellen so that's coming up the first week of april um so that gives us time even over the next few weeks i might have a few more tips from that book and uh and hopefully we'll have some stimulating discussions um but before we get to the interview with uh, Canadian writer Karen Walton. I do want to mention a few of the resources again that we talk about every week. TVWriterPodcast.com has all of our back episodes, um, 11 of them so far, uh, with uh, lots of great writers, showrunners, and uh, feature and TV writers. And there's also a TV writer Twitter da database on that site um, with almost 400 writers and their Twitter addresses. Definitely go to scriptmag.com. They have not only feature writing and the TV writer podcast, but lots of other TV writing re resources and writing in general. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Gray Jones is my handle. Uh, and you can find out about the interviews that are coming and how you can be asking your questions for these writers. But uh, now we're going to move on to the interview with Karen Walton. First, because we were a, limited, a little bit limited with our, our time, I thought it'd be great to read her bio first, and then you'll be equipped as we go into the interview with knowing about this writer. Well, 
Karen Walton is best known for the original cult horror film Ginger Snaps in 2000. Um, she has developed original and adapted film projects in almost every genre with top producers in Canada, the UK, and the American studio system for almost 20 years. Her television credits include the critically acclaimed true story television movies, The Many Trials of Jane Doe and Heart, the Marilyn Bell story. She was an executive story editor on season two of Showtime's Queer as Folk. USA and CTV's The City and freelanced episodes of CTV's The 11th Hour and CBC's Straight Up. She is currently a writer supervising producer on Flashpoint Season 4. She has an original series option to the producers of Durham County and is an executive producer on the successful web series for tweens, Ruby Sky P.I. She's a graduate of the Canadian Film Center's Film Writers and Short Film Labs, and her trophy collection includes a Gemini for Best Writing in a Movie or Miniseries, the Canadian Comedy Award for Pretty Funny Screenplay, and a special citation from the Toronto International Film Festival for the Ginger Snaps Screenplay, the CTV Banff International Film Festival Fellowship Alumni Award, the Sandra Kelly Memorial Award, and also the Writers Guild of Canada's prestigious Writers Block Award for outstanding service to the Canadian screenwriting community at large. She is an active member of the Writers Guild of America West, Canada, and Quebec's Sartec. Karen is the founder and current editor of the online writers community, Inc. Canada, Canadian screenwriters and their sketchy friends, which you can find uh, on Facebook. So uh, this is a, a very uh, established writer in Canada in a number of different fields, TV series, TV movies, um, feature films, and even web series. And she's also very proactive in the Canadian industry, helping other writers. Um, she's just a very gracious person. I think you're going to love this interview. So why am I still talking? Let's go right to it. This is Gray Jones, and I'm here with screen and TV writer-producer Karen Walton, best known for the cult classic Ginger Snaps. Uh, Karen, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well, and I understand that you are currently uh, madly writing Flashpoint, and so I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, and people have just heard your bio, so we don't have to cover all of the details, but we'd like to sort of fill in some of the blanks right now. Okay, great. So first of all, uh, well, we, we always start with how you got started. I understand you were born in, in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and in your early teens you moved to Alberta, and I was particularly mm -hmm. interested because you studied at the University of Alberta where I was born. No kidding, you were born at the hospital. I was born at the University Hospital in Alberta. <laughs> Fantastic, a small world, huh? Yeah, so you took your honors BA there in drama. Mm -hmm. Explain to me a little bit about... Um, did you have the writing bug at that point, or when did you get the writing bug? Oh, gosh. Well, that's kind of convoluted. I mean, uh, I was a big letter writer as a kid, as a very young kid even. I was in the all the school pen pal programs that they used to run uh, back in the dark ages where we were encouraged to use pens and paper and reach out to people we didn't know in the rest of the world. And uh, I really enjoyed that, but I never, never at all considered myself a writer of any form until I was oh, just about 30. So uh, I actually did my degree in drama. I was focused on directing and acting and dramaturgy. I was very interested in the uh, the study of stories, but I wasn't a writer. Mm -hmm. uh, I was more of a, uh, I guess, a doer and uh, finished university and went ahead and got my uh, assorted day jobs and didn't think about it again until I needed to uh, pay for a little ill-advised vacation and entered a contest that I thought I had a shot at, maybe, 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 mm -hmm. to win a cash prize for a radio drama and bought a book to figure out how to write a script wow. um, and put a story together and just sort of followed that and had my own story, of course, but, you know, had to go to the library and get out the information in terms of how to put a script together and did that and fortunately was lucky enough to uh, to win that contest and won the prize and was produced. Mm -hmm. and that all happened in a time in Alberta where they were quite actively looking for uh, young female authors, uh, writers to come in and, and be part of the entertainment industry such as it was there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's how it happened. <laughs> and and uh, and when was that? 
that would have been, ooh la, probably about 1992, something in there, 92, 93. 92, 93. Now, um, <laughs> I did have to mention one thing that I saw on IMDb. You did stunt work on Prom Night 2. Yeah, man. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, that came out in 87. Yes, uh, at that point, I was still in university. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, try I tried out for stunts with a fellow named Dwayne McLean, who continues to be a stunt coordinator in Toronto, but we met in Edmonton, where they were shooting Prom Night 2. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it was just, you know, on the news that he was considering local people to be part of the stunt team, and so I went for the interview, but I was a working actor at that point, mm -hmm. so that's how I started. I wasn't involved in film. I had no idea how films were made, uh, but that is the job that made me think twice uh, uh, about being in front of the camera and start to wonder about being behind the camera for sure. But it was a passing interest. I looked at it at the time as a, a really cool gig. You know, yeah. I was very interested in, in what went on. And with the effects crew as a performer, you're with the camera crew. You, mm -hmm. You're unlike acting gigs. You're, you're not in a green room and you're not sitting in a dirty warehouse full of a hundred extras. You, mm -hmm. were, you actually had an opportunity to see how things were made. And I quite enjoyed that, but it certainly didn't change my life for years after <laughs> wow i was an arts administrator and uh, that's what i did that that is a lot of fun yeah uh, yeah and so now at what point did you go to the canadian film center i went to the canadian film center uh, it was a longer program then so it would have been i think 1995 through 96 or mm -hmm. 94 through 95 something like that <laughs> yeah and, uh, and so tell me just a little bit about that experience uh well um i'm not sure what to tell you about that experience it's uh you know, it's uh, the Canadian equivalent of the American Film Institute, but mm -hmm. much smaller. Yeah. <laughs> so when I went, I had an awesome year uh, in terms of my fellow classmates being people like uh, writer-director Vincenzo Natale, writer-director Scott Smith, um, Graham Manson, who is a brilliant writer, one of the co-writers of Cube, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of incredible what would become you know sort of uh, the next wave of uh, English language writers and writer directors in Canada a lot of them I left out happened to be in the class I was picked to be part of so mm -hmm. it's a fantastic experience uh, um I uh many years later now but I since joined the faculty at least part time so I get a get the opportunity to pay it back a little bit but it was a wonderful experience very educational very very cool and then uh i'm i'm working primarily between your bio and I'm, imdb the first uh credit after that is a short called elevated but what mm -hmm. uh, was that the first um uh production that you were, that you wrote after that uh elevated is actually a canadian film center short and so that would have been part of the short film project that uh oh i see okay we, yeah, the class uh, at the time uh, then would have finished their regular program, and then you compete as a class against each other for short films, mm -hmm. uh, fully paid short films through the Canadian Film Centre. And that short film, I, co I actually co-wrote it with Vincenzo Natale, and uh, he came to me with the idea of doing a precursor to what would become the movie Cube, mm -hmm. um, uh, which was, you know, let's come up with something where we basically test out being able to tell an engaging story an exciting story, a horror story in one room. Oh, great stuff. <laughs> so, because that's that's the premise behind the inception of Cube, of course. Yeah, which is a brilliant film. Right. So he said, what if we did a horror film in an elevator for a short? And I said, I think that sounds fantastic. And that's what Elevated is. And I understand it's actually included, which is very cool, but I, I'm sorry, I can't verify that, mm -hmm. um, on the DVD of Cube in uh, Japan. Wow. Which is so cool. If that's true, I definitely want to get a copy. You just reminded me. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah. is cool. Now, in terms yeah. of television, you freelanced some episodes of CBC's Straight Up around 1998, but you must have been already working on Ginger Snaps by that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I started writing uh, Ginger Snaps while I was at the Canadian Film Centre. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, a project that I began doing the treatment for while I was still in the, the regular feature film writers program. Mm -hmm. I continued working on it um, during the short film program where we made Elevated. And uh, yeah, no, yeah, uh, we worked on that one for, for quite a few years on and off as we all had to uh, pay our bills and mm -hmm. 
and uh, feed ourselves. So that was indep- originally independently developed. Uh, cu- first couple of years, or at, l- or at least a year, it was just me and John uh, Fawcett, the director, trying to figure out the sort of zone of the story and what what we thought we might like to do. And then we went out looking for producers after that. So yeah, that makes sense. Very cool. And uh, and boy, that that film has become a cult hit. But at, at the time, it was released first at the Toronto Inter- International Film Festival. Mm-hmm. And uh, you received a special citation from the uh, film festival for your screenplay. That must have been a, a real uh, exciting time. Uh, we, well, it's fantastic, obviously, when you uh, make a film here in Toronto and uh, it gets to debut internationally at the Toronto International Film Festival. That's that's nothing to sneeze at to begin with. To be programmed is an honor, as we say. So um, to even be a part of that particular year's uh, lineup was great. And then, yeah, the prize was uh, completely unexpected. I, I've i been told, I don't know if it's true, that it's, it's never happened before or since that a screenplay has been singled out for a special mention. But uh, wow. I was very, very, very surprised and grateful when they did. And, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it was it was well received by critics, and uh, in particular, I noticed um, DreadCentral.com, dot com, um, a horror website, puts it on their top ten high school horror films of all time. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a special honor, and uh, and really, I, I mean, a very innovative film. So so kudos to you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so how how did that that film's release and uh, and that award impact your your career over the next few years? Well, um, I, I'm lucky enough to say it was the first of many for Ginger. Ginger, the film is, itself did very, very well as well as the screenplay. So, um, it had a, of course, a, a profound impact, uh, on my film writing career. I also write television. Um, so at the time I was still writing series television and, um, it, uh, the funny thing is the world's very separate here in Canada, even though the people uh, go back and forth between the two a lot, especially the writers and directors. So while it didn't really impact my television career except to make me more unavailable for television, <laughs> in, uh, in film uh, what it did was it basically opened the UK and Europe and uh, the United States uh, to me as potential potential playing fields for my stuff. So, you know, uh, the success of Ginger at Toronto, for instance, uh, got me set up with, at the time, a U.S. agency, and uh, I was listed, lucky, lucky, I was listed on um, Variety's uh, 10 Writers to Watch that year, and flown down to the Screenwriting Festival in Austin, and all kinds of cool stuff came out of that particular debut. So, it was very, very, very wonderful very gratifying after working on a little indie script that you weren't sure anybody would ever get to see mm-hmm. for so many years. It was very gratifying and, and a hell of a way to start as a screenwriter because that was my first produced feature script. Wow. And uh, as it turns out, my last since. I mean, I've been in development now for over 10 years on commission projects uh, in three countries and all kinds of systems, including the studio system. So it's been very interesting to do it independently and see all that success and, and attention come to that kind of a film, a small mm-hmm. film, and then turn around and be part of the much bigger system, the Hollywood system and so on, and and find that you know getting to camera seems to be twice as hard <laughs> as it was when you were working in obscurity in Canada. So yeah. very educational. <laughs> very very cool. Now now you did use that feature experience writing some TV movies, and those TV movies were were very well received. Um, Heart, the Marilyn Bell story, and particularly the Many Trials of One Jane Doe won you a Gemini Award of for our U.S. viewers. That's that's the Canadian sort of equivalent to an Emmy Award. Um, so t- talk to me a little bit about the differences in writing a TV movie versus uh, a feature. Oh my goodness, they're myriad because, uh, for instance, uh, straight off the bat, a television movie, especially mine because they were written for primetime network television, the old Sunday night movie of the week slots. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing that's different between a television movie and a, and a feature film is, uh, television movies are structured, uh, to sell you dishwashing soap or whatever <laughs> has to go. You know, that's, that's how they're built. They are a telev- primetime television is a vehicle for advertising, right? So yeah. the way you tell the story, how you break the story, uh, where you literally physically break the story so that we can pause and let you go to the washroom and get your snacks in order, or put the kids to bed and come back. 
um, or enjoy the advertising, which is sometimes <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, the story is actually dictated by the amount of time we have um, to tell the story well in sort of preset, and they're different by each network, preset amounts of anywhere from 9 minutes to 11 to 12 minutes per segment. Mm -hmm. So you're, for instance, compartmentalizing a story into five acts, perhaps, instead of automatically writing for three, which I know is uh, is North America's preferred way to do a feature mm -hmm. script. Um, the other things that are quite, quite different, both those movies are true stories. So I had a, an immense uh, legal and ethical, and in my case, a moral duty, I felt, uh, to honor the subjects and all of the people involved in those stories in a way with a special kind of consideration that I might not bring to sort of a totally fictional, original feature film in which I get to make up people and what their problems are. You know, uh, you have to be a little more acute and a little, a lot more sensitive uh, dealing with a true story, at least on television, uh, in terms of how you're reflecting what actually happened versus what you're going to, the way you're going to say it happened um, for the movie version, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, there was the, the just a feeling of responsibility to the people who survived these stories and, and doing right by uh, their point of view and their roles in stories is very, very different than writing original feature fiction stuff where you can just go nuts and make your sister a werewolf and she's not going to, you know, be really upset and her grandkids aren't going to call you and complain about their portrayal and all that kind of stuff. So uh, feature films can be very liberating. They're a lot harder to make, though. I would say the number, whatever it is, the number four difference is uh, just um, career-wise. Television movies at that time were a lot easier. Uh, you, you would write them knowing they were going. You would not be commissioned, and both of those are commissioned. I, I've never done any work on spec, I'm lucky to say. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when they come to you with a TV movie, you know that network network intends to make the TV movie unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. So you're not starting from scratch and hoping for the best. You're starting with something in hand, which is the will to see the story retold. And uh, usually in television, again, you're going to be surrounded by experienced professionals who the networks trust to deliver uh, that story to the form that they provide them in. So your odds are much better uh -huh. of making something wonderful, accessible, and that will be seen in the near future in a television movie back in the day, again, I say, um, than uh, just sort of sitting down and hoping for the best with a feature with all of the odds against you as they are against all of us so often. Um, I should say, though, that Movies of the Week and, and that form has changed a lot in terms of being able to do them in Canada. The old Sunday Night Movie of the Week has sort of evaporated from uh, a lot of the regular programming here. Mm -hmm. So the, the demand for those, the opportunities to write those kinds of stories that are very socially motivated and often, as I say, based on real things that happen to real people and just extraordinary things that happen to be true, mm -hmm. um, that kind of programming has uh, sort of gone by the wayside a little bit in the last few years. So I do miss the forum. I hope it comes back. I miss miniseries, too, but they've given those up as well. Yeah. Um, they're not as cost-efficient as they used to be. So. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're going to, going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, we've talked about features and the TV movies, and I know you've co done quite a bit of TV series work. Um, you were executive story editor on Showtime's Queer as Folk. You freelanced some episodes of CBC's The Eleventh Hour. Uh, but let's jump ahead a little bit to Flashpoint. Um, mm -hmm. that's a, I mean, as a, as a fellow Canadian, very proud of that. Actually, I, I worked uh, on a show with Hugh Dillon before that. Um, he, uh, was the host of a, a documentary series that I worked on, but um, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm so proud of that show because it's it's one of our successful Canadian exports. Um, tell me about writing for Flashpoint. Well, I'm uh, one of a new writing team on Flashpoint, so I haven't been here very long. But the couple of months I've been here since we started season four uh, have been extraordinary. It's probably one of the best experiences I've ever had professionally as a writer. Um, it's a really special treat and a joy to get to work on a mature show um, that has, you know, uh, provided consistently so many exceptional opportunities for so many exceptional talents uh, in front of the camera and behind it. Uh, the the showrunners, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Ellis and Stephanie Morgenstern, are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's a real luxury. To, to get it's the first time I've ever worked on a show that wasn't in its first or second season, still finding its sea legs and so yeah. on. We're well, I've been fortunate. So 
so fortunate to be invited in at uh, season four, and so we know what the show is, we know what it's capable of, we uh, we can raise a bar and understand what that means to our crew, to our performers, to our audiences, and it's just a fantastic, wonderful experience. The room is great. I'm very, I do feel very honored. Very honored to be here. It's my first time back at series television in, in about six years, if not more, um, because I have been away, uh, writing exclusively feature films for a long time. So mm-hmm. it's, it's like, it's like amazing. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. Yeah. I, uh, I worked on season five of Property Virgins and, um, it's so different than, than an early season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's series jobs. You know, if they're yeah. really, really, really healthy, they will grow. And, uh, yeah, it's just a delight. And, uh, I love, you know, SWAT stuff and tech toys and tactical and policing issues and stories of, you know, how people get themselves into the jams they do and mm-hmm. how people, like uh like team one managed to get them out i just find that fascinating the the great thing is i was a fan of the show like you i was a fan of the show from the very beginning for Mm -hmm. all of the reasons you state but also because i just i love crime shows and i love i love seeing how people with these kinds of jobs do their jobs Um, this is an opportunity to just sit right inside and in some days uh, when our consultants are here right beside the people who save lives for a living and mm. it's uh, quite a dazzling and humbling and inspiring experience. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was just absolutely incredible experience, really. Very, very cool. Well, I, I definitely want to talk about your, your work with Inc. Canada and the Writers Guild as well. Um, so I'll just mention a couple of things and, and see how much you want to comment about those before we move on. But one is that you've, you've gotten original series option to the producers of, of Durham County. Mm-hmm. Um, and also you are the executive producer or have been the executive producer for a successful web series for tweens, Ruby Sky PI. That's um, right. Still am. We're just, we're just gearing up for season two. Wow. Um, what can you tell me about, about those two projects? Um, okay. Well, the first one, the, the original series I've optioned, uh, to the producers of Durham County, that would be Back Alley Films. And they actually originally, uh, are the creators and showrunners of the series that gave me my first job in television, which was Straight Up. You mm-hmm. mentioned that earlier. And so 10 years later, here we are, and we happened to go out for a social lunch one day, and they said, no, of course we can, we'd love to have you on our anything we're working on, but what we'd really love to do is, uh, try and develop a series that you'd want to write and create and be responsible for. Very neat. So I happened to mention something over lunch and just like they say in fairy tales, the rest was history. So we're, um, yeah, we're, uh, you know, quietly developing, uh, uh, my paranormal series. It's an original series mm-hmm. currently built for cable, but we'll see. We'll see what happens, and very exciting. Very, very cool. Uh, I wish I could say more about it, but it's kind of a secret. <laughs> Can you tell? Um, yeah. What What was the other thing? You... And Ruby Sky PI. Ruby Sky PI, which is awesome. Yeah, it's a digital detective series for tweens. Again, another original. Um, written, uh, uh, conceived, written, and and show run by um, Jill Gollick, who happens to be the president of the Writers Guild of Canada at the moment, but also an extremely established and storied uh, Canadian television writer, and uh, who, yeah, just basically, you know, looked up from the traditional formats one day and was a big, you know, digital entertainment possibility fan like I am and said, you know, if I came up with something that I felt I wanted to do online, would you produce it? And I said, well, I wouldn't produce it because I know people who could do it, the hands-on producing better than I could, but I would certainly executive produce it and make sure that we can set this up as a as a going concern in the entertainment industry, and uh, that's what we did. So it's great. Um, it uh, features a, sort of a teenage girl detective who solves all kinds of uh, mysteries online, uh, usually a 12 um, episode season. We shoot these on location in Toronto with all Toronto talent and cast and crews, and we do it on a shoestring, and uh, it's pr- it's uh, broadcast quality. So this isn't you know a whole bunch of people fooling around with, with a camera in their basements. This is a full production, uh, great production value. Um, 
web series. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's a wonderful experience. We launched that last October, uh, the first 12 episodes of the first story. And it did so well with no promotion and no fancy marketing behind us that uh, we've decided to go ahead and do uh, at least a, a second season. We've got books in the works. We've got all kinds of, it's a true transmedia project. So it's very exciting to work a creative angle and something for kids, mm-hmm. for kids, which I don't usually do. That's Jill's specialty. And so it's given me the opportunity to participate in the project as a producer, uh, facilitate another writer and set of uh, talents that I really admire um, from a different perspective and producing something that I've had in mind as a writer for quite some time. So uh, that's my first foray is uh, helping everybody pull off this little bit of Canadian innovation. Very, very cool. Well, yeah. that, as you mentioned, we're, we're getting tight on time here. So I'll, I'll just mention the fact that you are an active member of the Writers Guild of America, West, Canada, and Quebec's Sartec, and you uh, received the Writer Guild's, Writers Guild of Canada's prestigious Writer's Block Award for outstanding service to the Canadian screenwriting community, which is, it, I mean, it's very obvious from your, your resume, and also Inc. Canada. Um, so, like I said, we'll move quickly past the Writer's Guild stuff and on to Inc. Canada, and we'll close with that. What can you tell me about Inc. Canada? Inc. Canada is a passion project. It's a, it's a hobby of mine, truly, but it turns out to be one of my, my better choices in terms of spending my free time wisely. Uh, Inc. Canada is literally an online coffee room for writers and all their sketchy friends. So if you know someone sketchy and you're a writer, you should bring them to Facebook and hang out with us there. Very, very cool. Very, very, very simple concept. It started just before the writers Guild of America strike, uh, I would say, I think we started in March 2007. I literally set up a page thinking, oh, it'll be me and five of my friends who feel sorry for me. But I did want to encourage uh, a place online in Canada where it wasn't a monologue, it wasn't a blog, it wasn't a website entirely filled with one poor person's point of view on what writing was, what we did for a living, and how to do it better. Um, I wanted to create a, a space in which people could talk about all of those things all of the time amongst themselves with professionals or emerging talent or totally self-declared amateurs or performers and directors and producers. I just wanted to create a space in which if people were feeling generous, they could share in in a sort of one-stop shop and not sell them anything and not charge them anything because I didn't think that need be the point to make screenwriting accessible and interesting and better understood and and more available to more people in Canada because of course in Canada we're all stretched out over thousands of miles from one another mm-hmm. so there was, there was never an opportunity for even professional screenwriters very often to sit down and get to know each other in our work and uh, when Facebook came along I went oh nifty now I can actually find all these fabulous writers I've been hearing about uh, that I'll never get to work with because they're film writers too mm-hmm. we never get in the same rooms together of course So, uh, and the TV writers I would admire a show but how would I meet these TV writers I've been writing films for the last five years mm-hmm. so it just became a, exactly what Facebook was originally designed for a great free cheap easy way to hook people up that I was interested in hearing more about. And as it grew, it just became this, like I say, wonderful online coffee room that the doors never close. It's open 24 hours a day. We have members from all over the world. Um, it's free. Uh, we don't tell anybody their questions are stupid or their ideas are dumb. Mm-hmm. We just are sitting around there whenever... Whenever we're in front of the computers, which with writers is all the time, um, you know, looking to have a great conversation or at least be useful in terms of understanding what it is we do. Very cool. And so you can go on Facebook and just search for Inc. Canada? That's right. Inc. Canada, Canadian screenwriters and their sketchy friends. Cool. And also uh, uh, you can follow Karen on Twitter uh, at Inc. Canada is, is your Twitter handle? That's right. I-N-K-C-A-N-A. DA Inc Canada. Very very cool. Um, and and you you also have uh, networking events too through that, right? We don't actually we how to how to say this. Uh, Inc was inspired as an anti sort of schmoozy networky, you know, pitch me pitch me kind mm-hmm. of thing. 
So uh, I wouldn't say they're a networking e- event. What happens is uh, in various cities at various times all over the place, uh, some inky somewhere, a writer somewhere will say, you know what, I'm going to go to this bar at this time. Mm-hmm. And if you're reading this, because you're at Ink Canada, uh, I'm assuming you're interested in saying hello and getting to know your local community or the people visiting your local community a bit better, come down. Come down and we'll have a beverage. Mm -hmm. In Vancouver, they do Sunday morning coffees once a month. In Toronto, we we run a rather infamous uh, drinking session (laughs) in a bar, in several bars now. Um, And, uh, yeah, basically it's actually not about networking. We used to have a rule stated on the invites that you were forbidden to talk shop and pitch Mm -hmm. because it was the only way we could get the writing producers like me to come down convinced that we wouldn't spend the entire evening just hearing terrible ideas. Mm -hmm. So... (laughs) In order for the pro community and the amateur community to hang out and get to know each other as human beings and not Mm -hmm. opportunities, that's what Ink Canada's Ink Drinks was invented for. It was designed to foster a sense of community. And if you weren't in the pro community, you at least could be part of supporting the kind of work that we do. Um, So it, it really, truly is in the Facebook scheme of things. At the physical event, Ink Stuff is social, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes it's issue-motivated. We organized uh, groups of Canadians uh, who were and were not Writers Guild members to go down and watch the strike lines in the States when that was relevant. We organized uh, rallies and marches up here to support our uh, writing comrades down there, mm-hmm. um, and we act as a group on on issues that affect the industry, but specifically that affect us as screenwriters, like copyright, things like that. But it's all ad hoc. It's all social. It's all optional. We don't expect anything from anybody except the, the interest and the curiosity to come down and meet people who do what we do for a living. So it is very social, and yeah, unfortunately, we don't we don't we don't run any of the sort of you know exploit the amateur idea mills. We just <laughs> we just ask people to come down and have a good time, and if they meet someone they like, that might foster a relationship that will progress from there. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds wonderful, and uh, and a great place to to end up. I, I'm hoping I can actually attend one of those events in March, and uh, maybe even get some video footage from that. So that would be pretty cool. Oh, that would be so cool. We'd love to have you down. I don't know why we haven't seen you before. Come down and have a beer with me. (laughs) I certainly will. All right. Wonderful. Well, I do thank you. We've gone a little bit long here, and I really appreciate you being so generous with your time. And not just generous with the time on the podcast, but generous with your time and being so proactive in the Canadian industry, helping other writers. Um, I really admire that. And and, uh, so thank you for uh, spending this time today. Oh, great. You're more than welcome. Thank you for even wanting to speak to me. Uh, I feel the same way about what you're doing for screenwriting with the podcast. So thank you. I appreciate being included. Great. Well, all the best to you and uh, good luck on Flashpoint. Thank you. And that was my interview with Karen Walton. You can follow her at Inc. Canada on Twitter. You can look for uh, Inc. Canada on Facebook. And also follow me on Twitter, at Gray Jones, for the latest on upcoming episodes. We've got lots more Canadian writers in March, and we've got exciting writers like Ellen Sandler um, coming up. Don't forget your homework. The TV Writer's Workbook by Ellen Sandler. Only 10 bucks, and it's amazing. It's an amazing, amazing resource for TV writing. I think you're going to love it. And we can talk about it. It'd be great to be on the same page and talk about the things that she has to recommend for TV writers. But until next time, thank you for watching and have a great writing week. Bye-bye. Hosted by Gray Jones, the TV Writer Podcast is brought to you by Script Magazine and ScriptMag.com, the leading source for script writing information in print and on the web. And by Final Draft Script Writing Software, the entertainment industry standard for script writing worldwide.